All right, let's do editor. Right. Cut. So I'm here with Karin um, Christiansen from Publish What You Fund. Hi. And I wonder if you tell me a bit about what you do and, and the purpose of, of the organisation. Well, Publish What You Fund is the global campaign for a transparency. So what we work on is campaigning for greater levels of transparency about how aid is given to developing countries, um, which particularly means we've got a bunch of bunch of work on the supply of information and how that information is supplied and a, a, a load of things that we ways in which we think it's important for information to be given to people so that it can be useful and we've got those encapsulated in the publish what you fund principles and there are four of those which i'm happy to talk about more. um then we're working on how people use that information as well. And that's where what you guys are talking about today is so important, which is the bar camp. And the, how do we actually get technology to engage in information once it's disclosed? Yeah. And so that we can actually get some of the positive we th things that we think a transparency are going to give us, which are greater levels of accountability, better governance of both aid and, and helping support the government governance of highly aid-dependent countries. Yeah. And that... Really, we need te technology as an intermediary in a lot of that yeah. stuff, but also not just kind of big technology. Some of it's actually small technology. So there's stuff like a registry of, and a language of how data talks to each other mm. that's really important, the common language, so that when somebody's saying Malawi uh, water project in a German aid agency, we've got the same code associated with that somewhere else so that you can search this a data registry, effectively, for Malawi water projects and pull them all out. Yeah. So developing that common language, which is what this International Aid Transparency Initiative, which yeah. is a global initiative that's running at the moment, is really about. And there's much, a lot of much small, smaller stuff, which is around developing apps for people in different places, different niches, who are going to want to try and get into some of that data to ask quite specific questions. And frankly, we can't even imagine what half of those really interesting questions are going to be. Well, I, I was going to say, because I mean, we, yeah, I've been, I've been talking, talking here with, with the guys about the sort of upcoming bar camp events, and it's how do you sort of break out of some of the sort of NGO mindset sometimes that exists with some of this stuff, where everything's a little bit locked down and... It's, it's based on what's gone before. And I'm, yeah. I'm... Well, that's what we're really hoping. If we can get some interesting data and some people who know how to, uh, to deal with data and some people that want to ask interesting questions of data all in the same space, we start to get a bit of an ecosystem that develops. Yeah. Because at the moment, there's quite the people that have got going to ask the really kind of hardcore questions of this information quite a long way away from the people that know how to help ask those questions. So I think we see the role of things like this, the, this um, data challenge, but also broadly, you know, some of these constituencies and communities we want to kind of bring together yeah. is actually trying to find some of that stuff. Because we don't even know some of the really interesting things that are likely to emerge yeah. from this. You know, it's much like people didn't think text messages were going to take off when they started, and yet they've become... Yeah. So who knows what's going to come out of this, because there's so many different... I guess one of the things is trying to identify some things that become really shining examples as well that people can kind of wrap their head around relatively yeah. quickly, isn't it? Yeah. And I don't know if they exist now, if there's any good examples that you've that exist out there today there's some good mock-ups that have started some people the people at a data based in dc yeah. started to actually mock up websites about what some of this could look like which is really quite exciting it's particularly useful to convince policy makers because yeah. they could see what this could look like um i think there's other places like in fact data.gov.uk which are on the more structural side is the infrastructure that this needs to move towards yeah this kind of data registry, data that can talk to each other yeah. stuff. Um, and then things like recovery.gov in the US, which is this attempt to trace central money to each of the US states, so Philadelphia, and, yeah. you know, that you can actually start to see the money coming in. Um, so, which is in many ways along the same principle. So there's lots of this stuff happening. You know, Google's done some really interesting work in Uganda. Yeah. There's people using SMS and text in Africa increasingly to do things. So yeah. it's sort of... Well, fertilising. I was I was talking before with 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 Cormac about the sense that maybe that just feels like the right time on this now. I mean, I've been at meetings at the GLA at City Hall here about London opening up its date its yeah, data streams yeah. and and with what what's going on in the US at the moment with the Obama administration. Does it? Are you feeling like like yeah. you've you've hit you the right time? Yeah. No. There's definitely a shift around. Um, transparency happening, and I think you know we've had our own troubles and with lack of it in the UK parliamentary system. Yeah, well, because I, I was—I mean, I was talking to some people last week actually that 
I think the what's happened in the UK with the MP expenses scandal last year was probably a, a really powerful um, impetus for yeah. opening up data because people have realised that even if there's a legitimate process within walls, it's now much easier to kind of take the roof off or open yeah. the windows. And once somebody gets in and highlights it, it can really damage a whole in, in, institution, can't it? I think there's also an increasing awareness that if people know data is going to be published, they'll invest more in it. So the quality of data actually tends to go up if you know it's going to be published. I know that I would write my expense claims differently if I know it's going to be published. I'd be yeah. clearer about why I've done things. Wouldn't have put a different expense claim in, but, you know, so... Or if you know that data is going to go public, that you actually management information systems data starts to improve yeah. because of that so it's got it, it helps with a lot of those sorts of issues i mean we've been very careful at publish what you fund never to say that it's going to cause these things yeah. but it's a bit of a prerequisite for a lot of, it's not going to result in greater accountability but it's very hard to see how you're going to get greater accountability without it it's not going to cause better coordination of aid but it will it, it's hard to see how you do better coordination without it yeah. so we've it's it's, it's a kind of necessary but not sufficient condition for a lot of things. Yeah, and, and just, I mean, just finally one thing is, I, I wonder, are you, when you talk about data, are you talking mainly about you know, spreadsheet-like data, or are you, are you looking at things like photographs and video and material like that? That's the long-term vision. There's a chunk in between, which is documents as well. So, yes, it's management, it's management data, um, financial data, but also it's the project document, it's the evaluation, it's the, it's the, um, you know, the strategic plan and, yeah. and that sort of stuff as well. So quite a lot of this is, is in document format disclosure. Great. Well, um, it's great talking to you. And just, just before I go, could I ask you to say again who you are and what you, what you Karen you Christensen are? from Publish What You Fund. I'm the director of Publish What You Fund, which is the global campaign for aid transparency. Karen, thank you very much. Pleasure.